Biden has put America on the fast track to ruin and destruction, and we will ensure that he does not receive four more years. We had a tremendous period of time. We had a tremendous thing happening just two and a half years ago. I used to say four years ago, then three years ago, then two years, and now it's all of a sudden it's catching. So uh, two and a half years, if you just take a look at what, what we did where this country was greatest economy ever, largest tax cuts in the history of our country, largest regulation cuts in the history of our country, Space Force, right to try. We did so many things. Strongest border, by the way. How important is that strongest border in history? We built hundreds and hundreds of miles of wall. We got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge, no cost. And we had the greatest border in history and among the lowest years ever recorded for drugs. And now the drugs are literally 10 times more than they were just two years ago. What's happening to our country? The 2024 election is our one shot to save our country, and we need a leader who is ready to do that on day one. We need a fighter who can stand up to the left, who can stand up to the swamp, stand up to the media, stand up to the deep state. Am I allowed to say stand up to the rhinos too? I think we can say that. I think we can say that. Stand up. Anyway, I just want to start the video. That's a uh, of course, Donald J. Trump in uh, South Carolina. And uh, so today I was on the trail. I made uh, two more, um, well, I got to make two more hiking videos. They'll be going up soon. And uh, But I got to thinking. And uh, the reason why this, uh, I just want to hit on this topic first, because it was the one thing that hit me the most, was now Biden has told Minnesota that they can't mine copper. And I was like, why would you do something like that? Oh, for environmental reasons, now we can't mine copper. So I did, in a previous video, I told you that I bought uh, some copper from SD Bullion. It's $1.39 a copper round. Now, I don't know the barterability of those, but now it looks like uh, our copper prices are going to go sky high. And I tell you, it just seems like every single day there's something that the uh, Biden administration does to destroy the United States. <laughs> I mean, it's just, and so I got to thinking, man, I mean, what would you do? And, I, and, and this is the theme of the video. What would you do if you were a Russian or China uh, agent in the presidency of the United States? Okay, well, the first thing that I would do is I would take down the Keystone Pipeline. Boom! Uh, Biden did that. So we want to eliminate... Um, uh, United States uh, being a country that uh, was, uh, uh, well, let's just say oil independent uh, or energy independent. The next thing I would work to do, my goodness gracious, is I would take down the fracking industry because natural gas uh, is, is kind of a substitute for oil and that would be the next thing. Boom! That's what they did and, and of course I would elect a zombie uh, in, in Pennsylvania and make sure that uh, we have representation in Congress uh, in a questionable election, let's just say. Uh, so I would make sure that that took place. So, um, so if I were a Chinese agent or if I were a Russian agent, these were the things that I would consider because, you know, my goal here is to destroy the United States. My goal here is to destroy the United States. The next thing that I would do as a Russian or Chinese agent is I would uh, continue, I would spend as much uh, uh, fake currency in, in the U.S. dollar uh, as I possibly could um, to, to uh, devalue the dollar and create inflation because that is a uh, tax on the American people uh, that, uh, that, you know, so that's, that, I would certainly do that. My goodness gracious, probably working in cahoots with uh, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats. I, that, that would be the next thing that I would do. I'd think about that. What's, the, what's another thing that I would do if I wanted to destroy the United States? I would, uh, well, hell, I'd open up the border, man. And I would invite, uh, well, I, I could definitely contact the uh, Xi Jinping in uh, China and maybe even uh, talk to uh, Russia a little bit and say, look, man, this is your opportunity to get all your, um, your uh, terrorist groups across the, the southern border. I'm opening it up. You can, you can send whoever you want. And by the way, China. Be sure and send as much fentanyl as you can and uh, kill as many Americans as you possibly can because I'm a Chinese agent, right? 
I'm a Chinese agent. This is all about killing Americans. Uh, you know, you don't have to send in troops or planes or nuclear bombs. We're going to just kill as many Americans as we can uh, with an open border. And so, yeah, we see that. Uh, so that that's going on because uh, because I'm an evil uh, uh, person that uh, I'm, I'm a Chinese agent. Right. So that would be the next thing that I would do. And, and I wanted to stop with that copper mine because it seems like every day they're doing something. I, the next thing I would do is I would limit uh, oil exploration. I would say that in for environmental purposes, we cannot exploit the oil, uh, the vast amounts of oil in Alaska. Uh, we will uh, make ourselves dependent on foreign oil. Um, so that, that would be a good thing. If I was a Chinese agent, these are the things that I would do. Uh, let's see, there's been so many, it's just, it's hard to even imagine that this isn't by design. Am, am I delusional here? I mean, this, they, they cannot possibly be this stupid. This is by design. They're, they are destroying the United States in every way possible. Oh, yeah, the next thing that I would do, okay, uh, especially if I'm working for China or possibly Russia, is I would leave $87 billion of military, U.S. military hardware and not destroy it. Okay, we could have, if you're going to leave it behind, at least destroy it because we had the capability, you know, with ships and uh, air, air power to destroy the military equipment. No, I would leave it behind so that the Afghan uh, uh, terrorists could sell it to, uh, which is what's happening right now. Uh, in fact, uh, Russia's having a huge show where they're going to display all the NATO equipment. Uh, not necessarily left behind. A lot of it captured in Ukraine. Uh, a lot of it uh, was left behind in Afghanistan. And so now China and Russia have all of that military equipment uh, and then left it intact. I left all the military. So that would be the next thing. I'd, I would want China and Russia to get their hands on all of the U.S. military equipment so they can uh, uh, you know, look at it and discover all its secrets. And basically, you know, what you do is you reverse engineer the equipment so that you can upgrade your own equipment. That's that would be the next thing that I would do. And uh, and of course, you know, I want to, uh, you know, disgrace the United States on the world stage uh, so that people know that, uh, you know, we we would leave uh, people behind our, our own troops and all the Afghans and every ally that helped us in the Afghan war and uh, and tell them, you know, hey, you don't matter. Uh, we're just going to leave you behind. Hopefully the Afghans will hunt you down and kill you. So that would be a huge thing to, to hurt the United States. That would be the next thing I would do if I was a Chinese agent or a Russian agent. I'm just saying, you know, because I was looking at this today. Because every day there's something that comes out and I'm just like, well, no, no, this has all got to be by design. I, I, so um, what's, the, what's the next thing? Oh, yeah, well, so what I would do next is uh, I would definitely want to start a war with Russia because that's going to deplete the United States not only of cash, and, and of course, you know, Ukraine is a huge money laundering scheme. So all of that, anything we send to Ukraine is coming back to the Democrats and uh, Biden. And uh, so they're going to get rich off of this, of course. And of course, the military industrial complex to a certain degree. I, you know, I don't think they're looking far enough out in the future. We're going to get into that here in a minute. But that's the next thing I would do, because that's going to deplete the United States of its military hardware. It's, uh, it's funds. Uh, I would send hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine uh, just to, to continue, continue to bankrupt the United States. So you tell me, well, where am I going with this conspiracy theory, right? Oh, it, it, right now it's a conspiracy theory. I think we're, uh, the, the next thing that I would do is I would steal a bunch of classified documents <laughs> and I would give them to the Chinese, right? Uh, which uh, uh, we only get in to see the surface of what was in Biden's houses and everything. And I, I don't even know how that came out. Maybe there's some patriot that actually exists in the Justice Department or the FBI and they, uh, it just became too obvious and they just wanted to, uh, uh, or maybe, it, you know, there's a lot of speculation on what you could do with that. You know, maybe they just don't want uh, Biden because he's cognitively, uh, co cognitively um, obviously uh, not there. I mean, really, I mean, and so is this Biden behind doing all of this? I don't think so. I think it's his puppet masters, but, you know, still it's the same effect. Um, so... All right, so let's get into some things that, that might help you. I, I was thinking about uh, my divorce and, uh, and how, you know, you know, I hate to say it. I mean, at some point in your life, you know, you do trust other people. And, uh, and I got to thinking, you know, because I, I had total trust in my wife and I had built up our investment portfolio based on 
her IRAs, or I call them hers. I mean, they were ours, right? Because we were married. And, I, and, and of course, I had brought a lot of money into the relationship. Uh, and it pretty much was, as far as our investment, our, 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 our retirement income, it was about 50-50, you know. Um, and so, you know, I, and, and I had developed the portfolio accordingly. And then when, when she did the midnight run on me and moved out uh, in, in a fashion that was just, unbelievable while I was in the hospital with a broken neck um, that uh, that was devastating but but she could have wiped me out and so that's why we still talk to each other because uh, uh, she left me the the means to obviously to survive so thank you very much for that um, ex-wife but what I'm saying is uh, if you are married um, or if you have a relationship with somebody uh, definitely take uh, many more independent steps. And how I got onto this was a handle on the law, handle on the law today. I'm listening to him on the radio because when I hike, I just listen to stuff, you know, sometimes music, sometimes handle on the law. Very rarely Sean Hannity. I don't really like that guy, but uh, he does okay. Um, I'm, you know, much, much more so than uh, Dana Lash. Uh, God knows she went on and on and on about the stupid uh, um, uh, you know, when the tape in San Francisco, when uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband was attacked with the hammer, I mean, it's just, who cares, right? I mean, I don't care about that shit. But anyway, so, uh, I, but I got to thinking, you know, about these things. So let's just get into it. Um, let's see, uh, and how I can help you. I just want to help you as much as I can, because every day I find out a factoid that blows my mind. And, and like they said, the, the fact that we're shutting down the, the copper mines in Minnesota, well, maybe you might want to buy them $1.39 coins from uh, SD Bullion, huh? I don't know. I don't know how you barter those or how you, I, but like I said, I shopped around on E-Trade and other platforms and uh, they're selling for $1.50, sometimes up to $2. And if copper's gonna become much more scarce here in the United States, I just don't see how you, it's not a win-win. All right, so, um, okay, so uh, you got a good, I got a good ticker symbol, and we, I talked about this in a, a previous video. Uh, this is uh, D-O-L-L-F, D-O-L-L-F, Dollar Varden Silver, but I wanted to give you some other information. You're probably not familiar with these people, but Eric Sprott, uh, or Sprott Investments, I've told you about buying their ETFs, um, or their, even their mutual funds. Um, he owns 10% of this position in this uh, stock. It's only about 68%. 68 cents right now speculative obviously I, I'm just telling you what I'm doing this is an investment advice and then Fed, Fidelity Investments also has a 7.5 percent stake and so you always look at who's investing in what as to the validity of it and, uh, and they're going to be announcing next week um, whether they've got a good um, they've, they've been drilling and, and it sounds like they've got some good news that might be coming out so you might want to look at that as a good investment um, I mean we're looking at uh, Oh, okay, that's different. So, uh, so there's that. Uh, let's get into the Ukraine war just a little bit. Um, the Russian Su-35 uh, um, air warplane uh, shot down a Ukraine warplane, uh, and so I was wondering, you know, what about the Su-35? What are the specs on that thing, and how does it compare to an F-16? And, uh, and I couldn't get the, I didn't pull up the, uh, I only have so much time. I didn't pull up the statistics on an F-16, but this thing sounds damn impressive. I mean, I, I was like, it's got a high maneuverability up to 9, uh, 9G with a high angle or vector of attack. Uh, claims to have a 5, 5G upgrades, uh, and that's the, the F-35. So it sounds like it could take on an F-35. Well, so, you know, I don't know for that to... And then it's got the super cruise capability, which just means it can go long distances. Uh, the speed on this thing, oh my God, I, this sounds just insane. 2,300 kilometers per hour. Uh, and it, it, it's a fairly recent uh, uh, Russian jet. This is why when you take on a superpower, when you take on a superpower, this this is this is the hardware that you're going to come up against, and that that's that's why this this whole thing was it's it, it's lunacy. These globalist lunatics. Oh my God! All they did was just kill a bunch of Ukrainians. But it, it came into service in 2014, so that's a fairly recent. When you think about the A-10 Warthog, I mean, one that that was back in I think it was in the 60s, and we're still using those. 
So this is this is a new plane from from uh, Russia, and it's not even their best plane. Uh, they got uh, other ones. Uh, there was a, a interview with a um, uh, an Australian who's fighting on the front lines with the uh, Ukrainians. I I think he's actually an officer trying to direct them because the Ukrainian officers are so uh, corrupt or uh, incompetent. Uh, so you know, basically NATO's sending in a lot of uh, mercenaries to try to to shore up the, um, the front lines there, but it's not going to work. But uh, he did say today that the Wagner Group is extremely well equipped, which is what I'm seeing. The Russians are not, you're, you're hearing the Western media that they're sending their troops in wave after wave after wave. And that's not true. It sounds to me like, uh, and this guy, was. this is what he was saying in the interview. He said they're extremely well equipped and they fight like hell. Uh, and then if you want to really watch the whole interview and the, and the summary of it, uh, you tune in to the new Atlas channel on YouTube because I watched the whole thing. Um, so, uh, oh, this, this was a new one. Uh, so, you know, with the new sanctions, uh, Ru Germany's no longer going to be able to accept diesel from uh, Germany, which means that the German people are going to suffer even more. <laughs> so, I tell you what, if the United States, if I was a, if I was a Chinese agent, Biden, and I wanted to destroy not only the United States, but you have to destroy NATO also, this, these all seem like steps to destroy NATO. So now Germany, uh, they, they say, well, they're going to have to turn to the U.S. And, and Saudi Arabia. Well, that's nowhere near uh, the amount of diesel that they're going to need. Uh, and it's going to be much more expensive prices for Germany. So uh, basically, uh, it looks to me like Biden, as a Chinese agent, is trying to destroy NATO at the same time he's trying to destroy the United States. And this was a hell of a quote. Holy moly, this one blew my mind. And he actually said this. Bill Gates, Satan himself, next to Soros, George Soros, I because I, I, I consider Bill Gates because I think he had a part in the, uh, the, the uh, whatever, the cough. Yeah. <laughs> I think he had a part in developing that. But anyway, he says the Ukraine government is one of the most corrupt in the world. <laughs> Amen. Amen, Bill Gates. Holy moly. I can't, I, 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 I don't, maybe it was a slip of the tongue. You know, that's what happens with these uh, evil mon, uh, evil uh, WEF uh, leaders and stuff. And sometimes they let the truth slip out, you know, and, and, and maybe he'll retract that statement. Uh, just like uh, that. Uh, well, we're going to get into that and we'll get to back. And, uh, and he also, well, it might have not have been him, I think it was somebody else who said that we are in an economic World War III, which is for sure. Um, this was an interesting fact. I, I mean, I tell you what, you want to talk about how, you know, we live in a free nation. Uh, it sounds to me like Russia is doing all the right things. It just, uh, so I didn't realize this, but Putin, he was preparing for this war for years. And uh, he told his people, uh, and I couldn't tell you the date or the time, but he told them to buy as much gold and silver as possible. And, uh, and so the people of, of Russia bought 50 metric tons of gold and silver. So if you don't own any gold and silver, I think the time is running out for you in the United States, or if you're watching this from, from other, any other Western country. Because the dollar's being destroyed. There's no doubt about it. And this is by design. Uh, Putin, Putin wanted this. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, this was an interesting statistic. I, I thought this was uh, something else. Was you know after World War II, um, most of Europe understood the uh, Russian role in taking down the fascist, the fascist in uh, in in Germany. Now, what's a fascist? That means a cozying up, which is what we have in the United States with Pfizer, uh, the cozying up of the corporate industry with the government. Um, that's what fascism is. And so Russia's role in the defeat of, of Germany was known by about 70-some uh, percent of, of, of Europe. And so that, that, because of education, especially here in the United States, that's down to like 20 percent. They don't even know that R Russia fought Germany in World War II. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, and then, of course, you know, there was another video that, that pointed out they were just setting up... Uh, Putin on a platter. <laughs> he doesn't have to do anything. The West keeps making statements that all he does is just broadcast all around Russia. That's why he's got a 90% 90, 90 approval rating, according to what I'm seeing. 
Um, so, you know, I've already talked about this, but you knew that the German foreign minister came out and said that Germany's at, at war with uh, Russia. And, and of course, they're trying to walk that back at this point. But I think it's too late. It's already been broadcast all over Russia. So they're, they're doing the work for Putin. He's been he's been telling his people that this war was necessary for many, many years. And the West keeps um, uh, keeps stating there was another uh, person that came out. I, I don't I'm trying not to slander these people. He says, we're going to battle to the last Ukrainian. <laughs> Isn't it amazing when you're spilling somebody else's blood that you can battle to the last Ukrainian? Oh my God! So that's uh, that's where um, these Western leaders are. I, uh, and then of course, um, oh the Af I, the, the, we already talked about this. The Afghan equipment is now in Russia and China, um, so they're studying all of that. Um, by the, this is another little factoid, uh, and and I'm telling you, I hope you're kind of fishing around, or if you watch sports, you got to know that these sports. Um, figures are dropping dead. Uh, Chris Baker just dropped dead. Thirty-five years old, man. What do you what what do you what do you think about that? I mean, I I can't say anything on YouTube uh, as to why that might be happening. You um, you do your own speculation on that. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, I'd say go to Rumble, the free speech channel. Uh, the other thing is there's a lot of scuttlebutt now, and and we've known this for for quite some time that, um, but it's becoming, you know, the, the war is moving much more rapidly now. And I hope you're kind of seeing that. Um, and, and so what we're seeing is that Russia is uh, about to capture Bakhmut. I, I don't see it, it I, you know, a couple weeks, maybe a month, I don't know. Uh, and then uh, Vahuludar is also about to fall. So um, I, I just don't see the war continuing unless NATO comes in with troops, which uh, it sounds there's a lot of neocons. Uh, uh, you've got the uh, you got the um, neocon Republicans and uh, of course the warmongering Democrats. Uh, every single Democrat's on board with the war. At least a few Republicans are standing against it. And so, uh, are we going to send in troops? And I think that would be a disaster. Uh, you know, because well, I mean, I don't think Russia's. I mean, if they've been this tolerant, they they've they've watched their 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 pipeline blown up. They've watched NATO uh, send, well, now tanks to, to Ukraine. They, they, they sent the HIMARS. Uh, they've sent everything to, to fight Russia. And Russia's been very well-tempered. Uh, and now there was another guy on, in, what was it, here in the United States. He says, regardless of the outcome of the war, we need to put nuclear weapons in, in Ukraine. <laughs> I mean, this, these people are insane. Oh, my God, I can't do it. So um, anyway, could, uh, I'll always like to promote the new videos. I did a major hike from Baseline uh, to, God, I can't remember the name of the street. CR 93, I think is what it was called. Uh, anyway, it'll be in the video. I've got uh, two hikes. I hiked out on the Florida Trail and then I hiked back on the bike trail. About killed me. I didn't think I was going to make it to the car. But it, they're going to be great videos. It's a beautiful day. Um, so those will be coming up. I'm certainly not going to get to it tonight. So uh, anyway, that's kind of it. Just going around the world in a horn. Um, like I said, uh, keep looking, keep looking. Right now, silver, I want to say 263 an ounce, I mean 23.63 an ounce or so. To me, that's a good price. Can it go lower? Obviously. I, in fact, in the next three months, you could, you'd probably be able to pick it up at a lower price. But, uh, you know, anything below 24, I've been kind of targeting. And I, I actually, you know, that's what I'm doing. And, and until uh, silver goes through the roof, which I think it will, and I've been saying that for, what, 23 years. <laughs> so, so don't count on me. You know, I don't know anything. But uh, I, I do think we are in the end game uh, with this, this uh, whole fiat money system, especially now that, that Russia's taken the whole world off of the dollar. Um, these, are, these are monumental times. And, uh, you know, may you, oh, God, I hate that Chinese proverb. I've said that many times in my videos. May you live in interesting times. Anyway, that's it. Peace out, stay free. It's good, 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 good to live in the free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious.